happy Sunday. We just got back from our walk. Kylo ate some breakfast. He's watching Miss Rachel now, which is why I'm not talking too loud. Don't wanna disrupt him, you know? He's the boss of this house, okay? But before I really start with my Sunday, I have to finish just a tiny bit of editing, like just these little teensy beansy last little bits of editing. Export the video, do the thumbnail, upload it on YouTube because a new vlog is going up tonight but by the time you guys see this video it'll be the previous vlog that i'm working on right now so yeah i'm just doing that but i love sundays sundays are so peaceful and it's crazy because before i had kylo like my sundays were super lazy sundays but now they're like productive and lazy sundays there's only so lazy that i can be as a mom you know but we tend to just like go for walks hang out in the backyard lay around the house play games like you know what i mean like the mom version of being lazy <laughs> but it's also productive because i gotta get ready for a productive week coming up so that means setting myself up for success for the week which means like meal prepping cleaning around the house getting all those things done so that throughout the week i can just focus on work and kylo so hi my sugar baby so yeah sundays are one of my favorite days but also saturdays yesterday i had the best saturday we just decided to go to the lake usually we take our morning walk around the neighborhood but we're like you know what let's go to the lake and it was so freaking peaceful and nice the weather was perfect it was perfect weather and after such a busy week i told you guys in my last vlog that i was feeling like mom guilt from just being really busy and being away from kylo more than i'm used to after having a busy week man it just feels like the week just came full circle because i was able to spend so much one-on-one -on -one time with kylo like i was just face to face with him he was running around the grass just having a blast and i feel like i just got a lot of like one-on-one -on -one time with him you know but today i'm actually going to be sharing with you guys i have some, a lot of bananas in the pantry and a few of them are getting super ripe so i'm gonna meal prep kylo's three ingredient pancakes these pancakes are so easy to make i have been making them since he was six months old and let me tell you he has been devouring them like i said there's only three ingredients they are incredibly easy to make and they're super healthy they are the perfect baby lead weaning recipe to start off with like if your baby is around six months cut them into strips and let them go to town so i'll show you guys that later on in the vlog but yeah come come out mama come out mama thank you yes this is dada's bottle All right, let's make some three ingredient pancakes and this boy is turning off my stove. So I already have my pan back there preheating on medium low heat, so just a little less than medium. For these pancakes, like I said, three ingredients. The first one is banana. Next up is eggs. So the way this recipe works is for every banana, you put one egg. So since I have two bananas, I need two eggs. And then you need some oats. The way it works is it's about half a cup per banana. So since I have two eggs, two bananas, we're gonna do one cup of oats. Okay. 
and that's literally it so easy now I like to spice it up a little bit so I like to add a little cinnamon in Kylo's because he really loves cinnamon it adds a nice little flavor but yeah it's totally optional and honestly what's great about these pancakes is you can kind of like build on them from there like those three ingredients are the base and it's good on its own just like that I used to make them just like that all the time most of the time I'll just add in cinnamon but if I feel like taking it up a notch or just switching it up so that's not the same every week I'll add peanut butter in here that's really great because healthy fats more calories fills them up or you can add applesauce you can add chia seeds I've added avocado in here which I know sounds crazy but trust me your baby or toddler is not even gonna notice there's avocado in it and Kylo loves avocado so he wouldn't even care like you know what I mean he wouldn't even care but oh my god <laughs> Kylo what are you doing I knew you were too quiet and he was in the living room putting the blanket in his cart and dragging it around I'm done. When your toddler is quiet, that's when you need to watch out. But yeah, so I've added avocado in here too, which adds extra healthy fats, so that was really good. Um, just keep in mind, it is a little messier when you add avocado. Another thing I love about these pancakes, they are mess-free. When Kylo was really young, like you know that baby lead weaning stage? Oh my God, the mess that they make. Ugh. But what's great about the pan these pancakes is they're not messy. And the other day when I made him pancakes, I actually added, like when they were in the pan, I added a few raisins in them and then covered the raisins like with more pancake mix. So I made him cinnamon raisin pancakes and he loved them. So yeah. So yeah, you can totally like switch it up and have fun with the pancakes. This boy is having a blast with his grocery card. This grocery card has been a hit by the way. I'm actually gonna link it down below. My mom bought it for him and it's from Amazon. It's so affordable. I think it was like 30 or 40 Canadian. So I'm gonna link it down below. It's been a huge hit with him. It did come with a ton of grocery pieces, which if you're a mom, you know that's just too much toys to pick up off the floor and some of the stuff was like not really appropriate for his age because he could put it in his mouth so i just removed what wasn't appropriate i think he has like 15 ish pieces in there so yeah that's just what i did but this grocery cart is the bomb he has so much fun with it here's what it looks like but it also comes with a little basket too I get a lot of questions about stainless steel pans. I actually did a little mini tutorial in my first, my very first vlog for you guys on how to make your stainless steel pan non-stick. So definitely check that out, but you really just wanna make sure it's properly preheated and then it will totally be non-stick. I'm doing this one-handed, y'all. Kylo wants to be held right now. And that's kind of the consistency you want for your pancake mix. But if it comes out too thick, then just add a little splash of milk. And if it comes out too thin, you can add a little bit more oats. But usually if you follow the ratio I told you guys, it'll come out the right consistency. So when it comes to these pancakes, I've had a few of you actually asking me for a tutorial. When it comes to these pancakes, making them in the pan, the key is only put the mix in when the pan is properly preheated. So let it stay on medium low for at least like five minutes. And then you only want to flip the pancake when you start to see the sides like getting firm and when there's like little bubbles in the center of the pancake. So I'll show you guys what that means. But that usually is about three to four minutes. Yes, boo-boo. I literally just called him boo-boo. I always call him boo-boo. And then he just said boo-boo. You're talking a lot lately. What about you are mama's boo-boo? Yes! Oh my goodness, I just adore you. So you can already kind of start seeing little air bubbles kind of popping. Sometimes I'll take a peek underneath the pancakes because I want to make sure that the bottom is not getting too brown before bubbles pop in the center. You know, because if that's the case, if your bottoms are getting too brown, Browned before there's even any bubble, bubbles popping up, that means the heat is too high. You can lower it a little bit because that means it's crisping the outside before it's even cooking the inside. But this should be good and ready to flip. I mean, I could wait until there's like more air bubbles, but I do see a few popping through, so that's fine. So I'm gonna turn my heat down a tiny bit because you can see it's like pretty brown. Honestly, pancakes do better on like lower heat. So my mom got him those little raisin boxes and he just carries them around the house and just eats his little raisins. Like I have a full ass toddler now. 
It blows my marbles. Kylo, what is this? Belly. Belly. He's hitting his own belly now. He calls belly BB. My mom made a joke and she's like, sounds like he's saying baby. Is there something we need to know? And I was like, there ain't nothing you need to know. He's saying belly, ma'am. Keep it correct, honey. Don't be making assumptions now. So I usually let them cool down on this rack. And then once they're completely cool, I will pop them in the fridge if you're going to finish them within like two days. But I normally will take all of these once they're completely cool and put them in the freezer. And they'll last in the freezer for a few months, but honestly, they usually are gone by the end of the week. <laughs> Especially because this batch only made nine. Usually when I make these, I will make a good at least 12 to 16 pancakes. Also, here is a good suggestion for the pancakes. If you have a hard time getting your kid to eat protein, I've added cottage cheese in these before because I saw it on Instagram and I was like, I have to try that. So if you add cottage cheese in here, it adds such good protein and it actually adds a really nice creaminess. The only thing I did do was added a little bit of extra banana to kind of like sweeten it up a little bit more to compensate for the cottage cheese. But Kylo loved it, didn't even notice there was cottage cheese in it. So I like to do that when I want to get a little bit of extra protein and Kylo loves his like chicken and beef so he doesn't really have a problem with getting protein but yeah if you want to like sneak in a little extra protein in your baby or toddler or kids diet add some cottage cheese in there they're not even gonna notice I've been leaving his little bottle down there so that he can access it freely and he doesn't have to ask for water all the time and I think now that he's a little older I want to clear up this bottom drawer and make this like Kylo's drawer where he can go in and access his plates, his spoons, his water bottle. Because I know that doing that is very Montessori style. It's kind of like the idea of giving them some independence and letting them kind of do things for themselves. So when it's time to eat, I'll say to him like, go get your plate, go get your bowl. And when he wants his water, he can go get his water, him, get it himself type of thing to teach him that independence and responsibility. Honestly, toddlers love it. Like they love like doing things for themselves. Like it just gives them a sense of purpose. It makes them feel involved. It also, I feel like, makes them feel like you respect them. You know what I mean? Like that's their space and like they can get their stuff. It's just, I feel like it's a really good way to like bring them up from when they're really young. Like he's only 16 months, but I think now's the time where he's old enough where I'm gonna start making that drawer his drawer. He hasn't been able to open the fridge yet, but honestly, the second he starts opening the fridge, I'm gonna make, which I'll show you guys. I'm gonna make this bottom section right here the part that he can access, I'm gonna make that his section with like his sort of snacks. So if he wants something, he can go and grab it, you know? But yeah, he can't open the fridge right now, so I'm really not fussing too much about that. But yeah, I think it's gonna be a good time for me to start making this bottom drawer his drawer. I've always wanted to do that, and now I feel like he's at a good age. This drawer's already emptied, because you know him, he was going through it and taking everything out anyways. And normally I have like, cabinets and stuff locked but this one I didn't even bother locking because I knew that I was planning on doing that for him so this cabinet up here has been his cabinet since he was a baby so I am looking forward now to taking all of his things and all of his plates and stuff maybe not all of it because I already know him he's just gonna take everything and throw it all over the place and make a mess I don't think it's necessary to put everything I think the goal is just to put a couple plates some bowls and some spoons so that when it's time to eat he can go and kind of help himself so I'm excited to do that So little Mr. Kylo yesterday, or sorry, Friday, I think, yeah, Friday, he threw ground beef all over the couch cushion. So I had to do some spot cleaning, and I also had to throw the cushion in the wash, but it is good as new. So it's time to put the cushion back on. I always get asked how I have a white couch, especially now with a toddler, but the key, like the trick is to get a material or a fabric that is very easy to clean. Usually anything with polyester is very easy to clean. And then I definitely recommend cushions that obviously have the zippers so you can take them off and just pop them in the wash. But as you guys can see, I actually have a blanket here on this cushion because before we had Kylo, like that was the most used side of the couch. And having the blanket is so much easier because if it gets dirty, I can just pop the blanket in the wash instead of having to like take the cushion off, you know? And like, as you can see, put it, putting it back on is 
it's doable, but it's not fun. <laughs> so it's easier to just take the blanket off. So I actually think I'm gonna wrap this cooking up with the blanket as well, especially that we have Kylo now because he's been getting it dirty. I actually don't know if I told you guys, but we try to like hide all the pens in the house, but he managed to get into my husband's bag and got a pen and literally wrote all over the couch, but I managed to get it out. But yeah, so I think I'm just gonna put, again, it's very easy to clean, but it's a little bit annoying to put the cushion back on. So I think I'm just gonna wrap it up in a blanket. Much easier to pop the blanket in the wash. I'm trying to get this done before I put him for a nap, because once I put him for a nap, I would like to start cooking and also doing my little self-care pamper shower and tanning. Oh. I was actually a little bit worried when he got ground beef on it because you know how ground beef like is naturally like, oily and then I seasoned it with like a lot of like paprika and chili powder so there was like red oil or orange oil and I was worried that was not going to come off but it did. It took a lot of baking soda mixed with um, dish soap and I took a brush and just did a lot of scrubbing and I also used a little bit of Oxy White Revive. But the Oxy White Revive is not a non-toxic cleaner so I try not to use it too often. Actually, I used the Oxy White Revive first and it, it did help but it really didn't take it all out. So I just used the baking soda mixed with white vinegar and dish soap and that did the trick and it's all natural. I am very careful now not to break the zipper, so that means doing it piece by piece, slowly, instead of like trying to rip it fast, because in the past, at my old place, if you guys have been following me for a while, I literally like broke the zipper on that couch, and it's such a pain to have to go take it and like get them to fix the zipper. But yeah, the cushion is good as new. Shout out to Kylo for making Momo put in work. <laughs> Time to put this little bugger down for his nap. So yesterday in the family group chat, my mom sent me this TikTok of this guy that made broccoli cheddar soup. And I was like, that looks good. And then I remembered I have a whole bunch of broccoli that I really need to use up that's on its last leg. Like it's gonna go bad in the next like two days or so if I do not use it. So it's actually perfect timing. I was just missing some cream, which I tried to get the um, one from Organic Meadow. I love that brand, but they were sold out. So she just replaced it with regular one. And then I needed some chicken stock and some whole carrots. But other than that, I had all the other ingredients. Like broccoli cheddar soup is one of those soups where you almost have like every single ingredient except for broccoli on hand which was actually surprisingly the one thing i did have on hand <laughs> but yeah anyways then i also picked up some chicken because i don't know we are a chicken and rice family like you guys know sundays are my meal prep days and um sometimes i get fancy and i'll do like pasta or i'll do just like different things but a lot of the times we're just like a chicken and rice family and then we'll have different things throughout the week with it like i mentioned to you guys before you know tacos burritos salads whatever so so i am gonna meal prep a bunch of chicken because kylo and my husband love chicken breasts which i should have got two packs i can't believe i only got one like this is literally only gonna last for like not even two days <sighs> I love chicken thighs, so I'm gonna be making chicken breast and chicken thigh, and then I'm also going to be making my veggie rice, since all of us love that. So that'll just be good just to have meals on hand for the next three days or so, and then plus the broccoli cheddar soup. So we're gonna be good for the next three to four days. We're gonna have meals, and I'm not gonna have to be in the kitchen cooking. So the recipe says to shred up the carrots, which I just tried, because I don't have one of the standing graters. I just tried, y'all. It's gonna take too long. So I'm just putting it in my chopper and doing chopped instead of shredded.
So I have some butter that's melting and I'm gonna add in the white onion, or sorry, this is a yellow onion. So I just added in garlic and then I'm adding in my seasoning. I'm gonna do garlic powder. Can't go wrong with the double garlic. You definitely wanna season it generously. I'm adding in onion powder now. And then his recipe calls for seasoned salt, which I wish I had, because seasoned salt just hits, but I do not have seasoned salt, so I'm just gonna use regular salt. Since I don't have seasoned salt, I'm gonna add in some herbs. This is some oregano. Add a little bit of paprika, just a little bit. Tiny little pinch of cayenne. Again, I would've skipped all that. Like getting seasoned salt just makes it easier. And the black pepper. You wanna let all that seasoning just saute and cook and sit in there for a few minutes. Next, I'm adding in four tablespoons, roughly four tablespoons of flour. Stir that until it dissolves. I'm gonna do two cups of chicken stock, which is about half of this container. So I'm definitely just like eyeballing it. I just lowered the heat a little bit and now I'm going to cover it and let it sit there for five minutes or just until like it thickens up a little bit. You can see how nicely it has thickened up. Now I'm gonna add two cups of cream, which is this entire container. You're supposed to add cream, but I'm doing half and half just to make it a little lower calorie. So you need two cups, which is pretty much this entire container. So it's been sitting for 15 minutes and I'm just gonna add in one cup of cheddar cheese. Mix that in and it's pretty much done. Obviously once the cheese melts, look at how good this looks. Mm, I'm sure it would be even better if you add like full cream. Obviously I did the half and half, but it's so good. So I just marinated the chicken for this one. It's just simple Montreal chicken spice, a little bit of paprika, black pepper, and garlic powder. And then for mine, I'm gonna make my chicken in the air fryer. I put water, some of that chipotle and adobo um, sauce that I showed you guys in one of my last vlogs. I put garlic, salt, black pepper, oregano, and yeah, just keeping it simple. I probably am gonna add a splash of white wine, just a little splash. But since I'm gonna do mine in the air fryer and that's so quick, I think I'm gonna do it closer to when Kylo goes to bed so that it's like fresh and you know I mean, I don't have to warm it up. So I'm gonna keep it in the fridge for now. So the rice is done. I don't know why, but for some reason I just really felt like plain rice but i never like to make my rice like fully fully plain unless i'm doing like some like unless i specifically want to play my rice but anyways so i used parboiled rice and the liquid i used is the rest of that chicken stock so that really is going to add that flavor but other than that i didn't do much to it because like i said i just kind of feel like some plain rice let me put this underneath because this is hot honey it looks really good though and then i obviously just added the regulars garlic powder onion powder salt black pepper with that chicken stock and that's it simple rice and the chicken looks really good one thing with chicken breast is it does not need to be overcooked like i used to cook my chicken breast for like 20 minutes but the reality is chicken breast especially when it's thinly sliced like that only needs like 12 minutes max fire up the heat to like a good medium heat even slightly higher than medium seven minutes on the first side a good five ish on the second side and you're good to go like you don't need to let it sit in the pan for too long because it just gets dry the way it is like this it just gets nice and like browned on the outside but the inside still juicy Kylo is going to his grandma's house tomorrow on Monday, so I'm making sure to pack a little container for him so I can pack it and he can bring it there because I am like 99.9% .9 sure he's gonna love this soup because it has his favorite things. 
cheese, and milk. I love putting on fresh sheets every Sunday to start the week off right. Now it is finally time to shower. That shower just felt so good and I'm actually filming my hair care routine tomorrow for my main channel. So that's why I didn't wash my hair, but I really need to tan like I haven't needed to tan much just because I've been Going on so many walks and just getting a natural tan from the Sun You can kind of still see some of my tan line, but it's it's definitely faded I used to be a lot darker. I feel like I'm getting super pale again. So I'm definitely craving a nice tan So I'm definitely going to apply some self-tanner today. I think I'm gonna do a full self-tanning routine on my main channel. So definitely stay tuned for that, but I'll share with you guys today what clean tanner I've been using because that was like a big thing for me. Y'all know I love tanning and um, ever since I just kind of like cleaned up all the products that I use and just try to be more cautious of like the ingredients I was like, oh no, what tanner am I gonna use? You know, because the other one I used had a lot of a lot of stuff in it, like a lot. <laughs> I'm not a very like dramatic person. Like I'll use, I'm not the type of person that just goes all 100 and something. You guys know me, I'm pretty balanced. So for me, I'm okay using a product if it has one or two kind of questionable things in it, you know? As long as it's not like parabens or talc or something. But the tanner I was using just had way too much stuff in it. So me and my sister were on the hunt, honey. This one from Amazon, this one from Sephora, which I actually love them all, but this one is my top favorite. So it's completely clean. So this is the Salty Face Tanning Foam. This is not sponsored, by the way. Like I said, if it was sponsored, I wouldn't even be able to like share these other two competitive options, which like I said, I do like these, but I found that this one, I'll go into a full detailed review when I do the cleaning, um, tanning routine to be honest, but I found that you needed a lot more product with these to get as dark. I love, love, love how smooth this goes on. And I actually like that it's clear because before I had Kylo, I was using self tanner that had like dye in it and it would transfer. But I was okay with that because I could just like sit on the couch and not do anything for a few hours and that was like my lazy Sunday. But now I obviously have to be up and about and I don't want to like transfer tan onto Kylo while the tan is baking, you know? So you don't have to rinse this one off. I love that about it. It's also just super easy to apply. I love that it has a glass bottle too because it minimizes the amount of plastic I'm exposed to. I'm actually running out as you can see, so I need to buy more like ASAP. And you can actually buy the refillable bag so that you don't have to keep repurchasing the glass container. So I love that as well. This is the curl cream that you guys saw me make in the last vlog. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It was so easy to make and it's completely all natural, non-toxic.
だろうって。